Good morning, family and friends. I pray that you're all well today, and I'm joined today by my friend Silas. Who also prays you're well today. Who also prays that you're well today. You want to show everybody your shirt, Silas? Roar, T-Rex. If you know anything about Silas, you probably know that he has a fascination with dinosaurs. And what else? Pokemon? <laughs> Frisbees. And Frisbees. Uh, he wanted to come on and say hi to you today because we both miss you very much. And thanks for continuing to join me as we go through the Psalms together. We're going to look at Psalm 14 today. So as Silas is leaving the room, uh, you can get out your Bible and turn with me to Psalm 14. All right. Hello. Hello. How about goodbye? Okay. Psalm 14. Uh, we can continue in the Psalms, and we come now to, uh, to two Psalms back-to-back, -back which, which can be classified as wisdom Psalms. That is, they're sort of highlighting for us the, uh, the, the nature of wisdom and foolishness. And so Psalm 14 talks about the fool, and then Psalm 15 talks about the one who will dwell in the holy on the holy hill of the Lord. And so this week we'll look at Psalm 14. Today we'll look at Psalm 14. And on Friday we'll look at Psalm 15. And so that Psalm 14, uh, the psalm about the fool. Uh, to the choir master of David, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have they no knowledge, all the evil doers who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon the Lord? There they are in great terror, for God is with the generation of the righteous. You would shame the plans of the poor, but the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. So what is the nature of what we call foolishness? Well, there are really two versions of foolishness. There's the version of foolishness that you would see in, in the world, uh, which essentially is anything that is not taking opportunities that are presented to you for uh, prosperity for earthly gain. Um, one example of what the world would call foolishness <clears throat> would be Moses, right? When, as we've looked through the the book of Exodus, we have uh, we, we 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 saw how Moses in the early chapters of Exodus rejected the riches of Egypt as he grew up in Pharaoh's house and went and voluntarily identified himself with the people of Israel, his people in bondage. And then, of course, that pointing forward to the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who, who identifies with us, was a man of sorrows, well acquainted with grief, could have, could have had anything he wanted in the world, and yet chose to go to the cross to honor his father. And that ultimately is what wisdom is. It is the foolishness of the way of the cross, choosing to live your life in, in accordance with the will of God, come whatever may in terms of your earthly circumstances that results from that. And so here in Psalm 14, what the psalm calls foolishness, and another psalm uh, along these lines, Psalm 53, and there are some others that talk about this, the fool who says in his heart that there is no God. The important thing to understand about this is that the psalm is not, talking about somebody who's intellectually an atheist. Certainly that would be in the picture here, but you and I, I act like the fool whenever I in my own life make decisions as though God is not watching. Because look at what it says. It says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. The fool is the one who doesn't understand that the Lord looks down from heaven. And so lives, and so chooses to not live his life or her life as though they are always in the presence of God. The thing is, 
Many of you may be aware that the Apostle Paul, in Romans chapter 3, refers these verses about the fool, particularly, they have all turned aside, together they have become corrupt, there is none who does good, not even one, refers this to everyone. We are all the fool by nature. By nature, we shut God out. We act as though he does not see us. And we do not live our lives as though God is always watching. Even if we might know that on an intellectual level, we choose to suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And what is our hope? Our hope that God it is that God would look upon us as he sees, would look upon us with compassion and not come to us in judgment as he would be very right to do. Ultimately, our hope is in the one about whom Psalm 15 speaks when it says, O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. And then it goes on describing the character of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the only perfectly righteous Son of God and who has become for us, 1 Corinthians 1, through the foolishness of the cross, has become for us wisdom from God and righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And so in him, the prayer at the end of Psalm 14, O oh, that salvation would Israel, for Israel would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Let, his, well, let Jacob rejoice, let Israel be glad that is fulfilled when Jesus Christ comes to cover our foolishness with the wisdom of his cross. And so, beloved, may we be those today who rejoice and who are glad, even in a time such as ours, even as we, um, we are in this situation where we continue to linger in isolation, loneliness, sickness, pandemic, all of these, and everything that goes along with that. May we take heart in knowing that the Lord looks down from heaven and sees, and he looks upon us with compassion. And so live lives of repentance, and live lives even now as those whose every, every decision is made in the presence of God that he sees and he knows and he acts for the redemption of his people and he turns us from foolishness to wisdom through the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you today and he grant you in Jesus much wisdom and we'll talk a little bit more about the nature of that wisdom on Friday. So join me again then. God be with you today.